After all the pitching injuries the Guardians announced on Thursday, I think we all have to make a collective plea to whoever has the Guardians voodoo doll out there. Please, just stop. You are Locked On Guardians. Your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show where we will never cease to follow the Cleveland Guardians. Uh, that's it for today. I'm done. Uh, but uh, I am Jeff Ellis. For those who don't know me, I got my start close to a decade ago writing for Indians Prospect and Indians Baseball Insider. And then I was the lead draft and prospect analyst at Scout and 24-7, replacing Kylie McDaniel. Uh, and then I, I took over this job when one of the first purveyors of podcasts when it came to baseball over here on Locked On, almost 1,200 episodes in. I am Justin Latta. I got my start covering the Indians minor league system back in 2007. I've written for nearly every Cleveland baseball blog got what you can think of. I've done freelance work for the News Herald and Morning Journal in Cleveland. I've also worked for Indian slash Guardians Prospect and Cider at the same time as Jeff, but I was the managing editor there for a few years until... Um, you know, things got kind of rough on the internet sphere. And now I uh, just kind of folded. They sure did. It's, Mm -hmm. it's a quieter sphere these, these days, but I got my own newsletter at next year in Cleveland and I write for prospects live and here with you, Jeff. And I just, I just wanted to stop. I just want a day of no more injuries. Actually, Jeff, I have a theory. Who is to blame? What is the cause of all the guardians bullpen injuries? This is going to be controversial. It's going to get me in a lot of trouble for this theory. No, it's changing wife. the name. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's my wife. <laughs> oh, my oh. wife. The last two years at Guards Fest has taken a picture with Sam Hentges. I got her a Sam Hentges jersey. Of course, she's a fan because she calls him Handsome Sam. She got a Jason Kipnis jersey back in 2017. What happened to Jason Kipnis in 2017? He got hurt. What happened when she got a Sam Hentges jersey? He got hurt. Last this this past guards fest, she got a picture with Sam Henches and Trevor Steffen. Just saying, if this were a conspiracy theorist podcast, I think people would would buy it. And there's me, all that time she has spent game. hanging out with Daniel Espino. Yeah, can't explain that one, but uh, <laughs> surely blaming your wife has never gotten anybody in trouble ever, right? Uh, oh. No comment. I. It's been a good evening <laughs> tonight. Your I wish you all a good out. day and goodbye. <laughs> comment below if blaming your wife for anything has ever worked out for you. It was a tough day. Uh, let's start at the top. The most impactful injury. Uh, this one hurts. Trevor Stephan, Tommy John is going to miss the entire 2024 season. Yeah, especially because as much as people are like, you know, it's like 14 months, it's more than 14 months to come back from, for most people from Tommy John, because year one, your control doesn't come all the way back. Yeah. It's the last thing to come back. It's, it's basically to get a guy back to hundred percent is two years. And let's, let's also be honest. A lot of guys don't come back the same. It's closer to 80 than a hundred. We act like it's a hundred percent, but it's closer to 80% come back the same. I kind of don't want them to sign any extensions with anyone anymore. Like right now it's like, okay. So Miles straw turned into a pumpkin. Uh, Trevor Stephan got hurt. It, it feels like they're Jimenez was down Jake, last year. You know, Jimenez numbers go down. You go back to when Jake Westbrook signed his and Travis half signed his oh my. He got hurt. Like there is, I want to talk about a voodoo. It's apparently signing an extension with this team. <laughs> Jose Ramirez. Corey is one one He's the only one who fine. can overcome it. And Carrasco's were, were, I mean, yeah, do I, he had heart. I mean, he signed it and then started having heart problems. So I don't know. He he didn't affect him, but uh, it's not like it was perfect health after that. Um, yeah, it's weird. It's just weird. I mean, I'm not saying this is an actual thing. I'm joking, obviously, but um, yeah. but it is a really bad track record uh, health wise. Yeah, and people I know some people are going to comment saying, well, Stefan wasn't that good last year. And yeah, he definitely had some ups and downs last year, control wise. Maybe they that was nothing. That, I mean, Sandlin was worse. Morgan was worse. Like, you're moving everyone up a role who was not as good as him, right? Yeah. So I know some people are going to say that, that 
Stefan was not great last year. And that's true. He definitely had his struggles. Um, I don't think he's as bad as some people said. Some people might say, well, replacing him shouldn't be that hard. It's going to be really hard to replace Trevor Stefan. I mean, he definitely, if you look in that bullpen, I mean, the trade for Scott Barlow is going to look a lot more important now, obviously. But I would still put Stefan above, a healthy Stefan above Barlow. Um, like you move Barlow up, that seems to be an important signing or important, important trade now. But um, Stefan being the, the second best reliever in that bullpen, your most reliable setup guy, even if he was mm, up and down at times best. last year. Their best. Behind the other guy who got hurt. Well, yeah, we'll talk about him. The other guy that got hurt, Sam Hentges. It seems like he's going to be fine. I'm just going to assume Hentges is going to be fine because I can't take any more bad news at this point. Uh, so we're going to assume he's going to be okay. But um, how are they going to replace him? I don't know. You got Class A in the ninth inning. The Barlow trade looks like it's going to be super important. We hope Hentges is okay. And then, yeah, you're counting on a bigger role for, for Nick Sandlin. You're counting on a bigger role for Eli Morgan, who seems to navigate the first half wonderfully in the second half. He just, I don't know what happens to him. And then, you know, it seems like Tim Heron and Kate Smith are probably going to bo- both make this bullpen or one or one of the two. And then I know people are talking about Hunter Gaddis making the pen. Um, and we'll have to talk about Gavin Williams because Ben Lively might have to go to the rotation for a little bit. And then uh, Carrasco is, was mentioned as a, as a, a starting option. Suddenly we talked yesterday about Tyler Beatty, maybe not making the roster. Suddenly he seems more likely. And then you got Nick Enright, Anthony goes Franco Aleman, some other guys down there. Like I, it's going to take collective effort. I don't think one guy can replace Trevor Steph and they're going to need everybody to step up. Someone's going to need to take a step forward because with, with Barlow and, and Steph and you had a really good one, two punch at the back end of the bullpen to go to the eighth inning and take the pressure off the other person. Now it's all on Barlow. And, you know, quite frankly, if he's got a one-year deal, they, they should just use the heck out of him. I hate to say that, but they should just use the heck out of him because either he becomes your most reliable arm behind Class A and he's gone at the end of the year, or you use the heck out of him and you trade him. That's the only way it goes. Yeah. No, you're not wrong with that. I mean, you just want to use him – as long as he's effective um, to me, like who's going to step up. I, I, I kind of, in many ways thought Barlow was already going to be the eighth inning guy um, with, which would have been of, great if you can put Stefan yeah, in the seventh it, inning role. Yeah. Stefan and Henches in that seventh inning role. Um, to me, I mean, it does seem to pay the way for Kate Smith. We'll have to see what he can do, but I also wonder how much this accelerates, you know, Andrew Walters, because again, we got to see that Franco Aleman can be available. Like that's what's holding him back is his availability, not his mm-hmm. ability. Um, and, and that's, you know, Alamon ability is availability. And, and Alamon and Walters are clearly to me, the top two relievers in system, you know, in terms of prospects and you draft a Walters cause he should move quick. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, Hey, this opens up a 40 man spot. If you want to look at the, the upside, but Internally, Sandlin just has not been consistent. Um, Morgan's yeah, not Morgan, consistent. Yeah. You know, in a lot of ways, I, yeah, it's, I think Barlow can pitch better than Enya Hell, but it's like, um, you know, you just, the, the problem with trading one reliever for another is, yeah, you know, it, it, I'd feel a lot safer not if we still had Enya You know, it's like we don't, we just don't have that depth. Um, you know, yeah. maybe it ends up being Gaddis. If you believe that he's tipping pitches, then he goes in and pitches well in his role. Yeah, I think Gaddis could play a big role for sure. We'll see. We'll see Alamon at some point this year, no matter what. I think. Um, you know, it's funny. I think yesterday or two days ago, you and I were talking about. Um, you know, if if something if Alamon or Walters ends up in the majors this year, I mean, something went wrong. Well, things have gone wrong. Here we are already, uh, and they might get their chances. Although, if they're not good this year, if the bullpen ends up hindering their playoff chances, I wonder if they'll just say, no point in bringing up. Andrew Walters for a, a season that can't be saved. I do. You, is this bullpen? Does this Trevor Stefan loss have a major impact on the, the playoff chances? I mean, the bullpen last year was, was shaky. Class a needs to be a little bit more consistent. Everybody in the bullpen need to be more consistent. So I don't think losing a guy helps. I think this has a, a pretty significant impact on their playoff chances, especially when they can't, con- they can't contend for a wild card. It's division only. Yeah. You know, I think, it, it has to affect them because they just they have depth, but they don't have depth at the top. Like they they have a lot of interesting arms. 
Um, you know, we have heard almost nothing about 99 since his issue, even if you're hoping that he could be come back and well, we like, today. He won't start. He start. will start the season on the yeah. IL. He is he not just, ready to go. We haven't heard anything like uh, I feel like progressing. Like maybe I should clarify. He's throwing. Like, he's throwing. He just doesn't. He's starting to throw. He just doesn't have time to build time up. To be, to build up. Okay. So yeah. I think I must have been so focused on everyone else that I just blew past his because we had everyone else. Yeah, he's and him. cleared to do plyometric activities, falling strength chest. So he's yeah. He's just, just behind. He's very behind. It's like maybe you hope he rebounds to something, but it's like if he, well, that's the thing. No one's going to trade for him. So it's like you might as well just enjoy if he rebounds uh, that. But yeah, I, at this point, you know, it's and one of those suddenly things. this opens up, a, you know, we talk about Tyler Bede. Suddenly this opens up a spot for maybe a, a Tanner Burns if the bullpen goes better for him. Reports say he was throwing harder in spring training. So if he's a reliever now, that maybe that opens a spot for him. He is. Was Rule 5 eligible, didn't go there. Might be a good chance to look at a former first-round pick. We'll see. We still got to talk about Henches a little bit, though I assume he's going to be fine. We have to talk about Gavin Williams, the next most impactful injury. We'll get to Espino, and we'll get to some baseball to watch this weekend to kind of cleanse your palate. At least the baseball you're able to watch. Uh, all coming up on Lockdown Guardians. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood dot com backslash boost subscription fees apply and now for some legal info claim as of q1 2024 validated by radius gold market research investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras and 401ks three percent match requires robin hood gold for one year from the date of first three percent match must keep robin hood ira for five years the three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions robin hood ira Available to U.S. customers in good standing, Robinhood Financial LLC, member SPIC, is a registered brokered dealer. For some stuff you can watch this week, if you want to watch a little bit of college basketball action, whether it's the MAC tournament that's going on in Cleveland or the NCAA tournament next week, do it with FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, if you're a new customer, if you have not gotten into FanDuel yet, perfect time. New customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. As we've been telling you, go on there, make a $5 bet right now. Even, even the easiest thing you can think of to put a bet on. Rebounds, prop bets, games, even if the odds are not great, put the $5 bet down if you're a new customer. Take, take the win. You'll get 200 bucks if it wins, and you can use it on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all starting next week of the tournament. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. If you're also looking for more to watch, uh, Lockdown Sports has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel, Lockdown Sports Today. Baseball fans, market calendars from March 20th, 7 p.m., the best MLB season preview coming up exclusively on Lockdown Sports today on March 20th at 7 p.m. Be the first to get local insights from MLB local experts in the Lockdown Podcast Network. I'll be on there for the AL Central show. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Lockdown Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the AMP free Amazon Fire TV channels app. All right. More bad news. Well, first we got, you know, the Henches update, the finger. He's going to get it looked at by a hand specials on Thursday. No pun intended, fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, so I, I, Adam Miller has scarred me with finger injuries, okay? Adam Adam Miller has <laughs> scarred us all. He is an internal. Yeah. I mean, I I feel bad the guy never made it to the big leagues. Uh, for those who are not familiar with Adam Miller, just a throwback. Uh, you know, back around 2006, 2007, he was, he was Daniel Spino before Daniel Spino. He's one of the top pitching prospects in baseball. High school kid. I believe they took with a comp pick. Uh, he was the future of this yeah. team. Texas and- kid. Texas kid and he kept having issues with blisters and then finger issues and never played in the big leagues, which is this 
he was in a time where this organization had really bad prospects, like just in general, the prospects, they were, we're talking like 29, 30th every year. It, it was Smith. ugly, ugly prospect. Pools. I'm, yeah. I mean, g- guys who were in the top 10 then wouldn't make the top 25. Now it was ugly. And Adam Miller was the one shining light. So of course he uh, got hurt. Consistently. Yeah, I hope it it's just bad. a blister for Henches, nothing but, worse. I mean, I think I, I know we're trying to slow play it, but it, it's going to be interesting because we already talked about, you know, uh, Stefan out, Henches out, 99 out. Gavin Williams, we'll get to, who's not going to start the year on the 26 man. It's going to be. Don't don't overreact. The beginning of the year is going to be something because they're down yeah. five pitchers. Or is that four pitchers? I wasn't trying to count there. I think it's four pitchers, but still four. If you count Karen, 99. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. still that's, that's a Here's... lot to try to, to adapt to on the run. And it stinks that this is the second year in a row. We have to adapt on the run to a whole bunch of pitchers being out. Yeah. That's, that's definitely concerning. And, and the thing to remember too, is, you know, you can't win a division in April, but you can sure lose it. Yeah. Um, so they're going to have to kind of keep things patched up as much as they can in April if they want a chance to win the AL Central. Um, we had a commenter today saying this is a 55-60 win team. And- I don't know how they're going to lose 16 games when they should be better in a year ago just by the fact that young players. You yeah, know. no, that's that's mind-boggling. I mean, it's going to be, like you said, it's going to be tight early in the year. Listen, the I'm pitching, the only but- hater here. Uh, you know, it's based <laughs> there can on only the, be one. <laughs> there's only one hater here. All right, Gavin Williams is going to start the year on the injured list because – uh, there's just not we enough time nice to build things. him up as a starter. We can't, oh. we can't have nice things. Yes, that's what it is. Um, the lack of time to build up length at this point. Uh, they're hoping he's going to throw again in a few days. The MRI, they Clay says, has no UCL damage. Um, I believe that was also the statement they used for Trevor Stefan, not to alarm anybody. But again, I'm choosing to be positive here because I just can't handle any more news. Because especially otherwise... to a guy like Gavin Williams. We'd be crying the 30 their podcast would just be us crying for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's he's never you're, coming back. If you sorry to anyone if, listening on headphones. Yeah, what what is that saying? You, you smile, you laugh because otherwise you'd be crying and you couldn't help. Um, do you have any more level of concern for Williams's injury starting the season on the IL? I do. Um, they they want to make a small, you know, make it sound very like everything's okay, but they they try to make everything sound like it's okay. So that doesn't reassure sure. me. I made it sound like Stefan's okay. You know, everything has gone well with everyone else. It's an elbow. Elbows are scary. He's a player who had. It wasn't concerns. during a game though. I know. It, at least. I, I don't care. It's an elbow. Elbows are scary. If they made a Friday the Thirteenth and recast it with an elbow <laughs> blowing out, I would just spend the whole movie screaming in terror. Um. Uh. And he had health issues in college that it not from, arm issues though. It was, I it doesn't was back. back, but still like when teams are that scared of a body breaking down, they take them off their board. The, the two guys I heard that about were Espino and Williams and th- that stuff lives in my soul. Now I'm not saying he could be perfectly fine. Nothing could happen, but I just, I, it, until he is out there building his way back up, I'm going to be afraid. That's just the way it is. And I know they say he'll be out there. And it's my concern is still like a six. It was a five yesterday. It, it, That's it's fair. crept up. But I, you know, I right now with everyone else, like just spontaneously combusting, like, boom, your arm's gone. I just can't help but be afraid. I, oh, is this where you're going to talk about how Ben Lively has no options again and keep just burying <laughs> the poor dude? Yes, he has no Let's options. create a match.com profile for Ben Lively. He has- he has no options, which is why he signed with the Guardians, right? Isn't that isn't that the joke that writes itself right there? Um, I'm yeah. I'm I'm with you though. The five out of six, five to a six, a little more concerned. The only thing I'll say positively, I, I'm choosing to look at the the glass being half full here, though, is that instead of trying to rush him back to start him for the season, they are trying to make sure he gets built up properly. So as soon as I start hearing, oh, he's throwing again, he's on a throwing program, he's throwing bullpens. And he reported no pain. I'll be I'll be back down to a one. But um, yeah, same. same. The, the slow play the slow playing makes sense either way because you know it's a long season. It's only a second major league season, and um, if you have any chance to win this division, they need Gavin Williams to be a hundred percent as as hundred percent as a pitcher can be. So um, Chris Antony and Stephen Vogt mentioned some options in the short term. They're saying it's short term. Uh, lively. They mentioned Curry Carrasco. They mentioned Cantillo only that he got sent down soon, but yeah. Antonetti said that um, hard not to see him impact in the rotation sometime in the near future. If it's like 
I, don't, I have no idea when he starts throwing again, so I'd hate to speculate. But if it's like two starts, I would be fine with Lively and sending Curry to, to AAA to be depth. Or, or I guess Carrasco because, I don't know, you do have a spot in the 40 coming with uh, Trevor Steffen hitting the 60 day. So um, for two starts, I'm fine with either of those guys. If it's long, If it was longer term, I'd say Curry or Cantillo. I say Curry. Just my my view is like put lively point, in the bullpen and then do Curry yeah. for Williams. Or you know, you're, okay. you you still want a live or lively. You still want a lively arm there. You want a you know a long guy, long long lively. That's what we're gonna call one it. of those two. You don't think he's, he's old long more lively now? That is it old, more likely lively. now that the first three of these guys all make the roster? Now that you have a two open bullpen spots and I, a rotation spot. I I don't necessarily. Because Lively and Curry are in the 40. All you got to do oh, is I think, Carrasco. I mean, I think I, I we'll, we'll see with Carrasco or Beatty. I don't think either of those guys are I, – I don't think either of them make the team. But that, that's, I think they're taking Carrasco just because of experience. I know there's going to be some sentimental value there, but I think just based I, on the experience, they might do he it. Is not, it's, I haven't heard anyone feel like he's pitched to a level where you could even throw him. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I think you might see some of the, someone like Kate Smith, but – um. But I think you go with Curry as a fit because that's what he was for you for large chunks of last year, anyways. He outside of Cantillo, he's the safe. I mean, Cantillo is not safe because you know early on it might be a struggle. But Curry's the safest option in that group, no matter what. I agree. Um, one of those guys is going to the bullpen, I would say. But one of them, I don't know. You might need Curry and AAA for depth and the way things are going right now. So it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. And you know, just as important what the rotation looks like all you know six or seven months of the year not just what it looks like in april all right we still have to get to the daniel spino news unfortunately the the bad news is not coming here on a friday we're sorry whenever you're listening to this uh we'll address the justin campbell situation and if we have time we'll get to some uh college baseball to watch this weekend because that's the only baseball you can really watch this weekend all coming up and i am here to close the wrong tab before I start talking about Fire TV channels, the nice Fire thing TV is your destination for sports. They're, they're not going to, uh, they won't close the wrong tab on you. That is for sure over at Fire TV. Uh, here's the thing about Amazon. They're everywhere. Uh, I quite enjoy a lot of the services. I think I saw that the Invincible cartoon is coming back, and that is, uh, you know, I read that comic, so that's something I have enjoyed. Uh, but on top of their fantastic shows, they're expanding into Amazon Fire channels, especially if you have a Fire Stick, which is really cheap, really, or a Fire Smart Enable TV. They're going to have more sports for you, and it's all available at your fingertips. They talk about college base, college basketball and opening weekend for baseball, but I think that means college baseball, and to me, that is what I can't wait to watch on the Fire channels, which are, they recently created these channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports and brands all for free keyword free so you can watch sports you can watch you know how-to videos you can watch so many different things including us we'll have the locked on uh channel over there so to learn more visit amazon.com slash locked on fire tv all one word today i'll probably have other guardians podcast on our network too you can always watch those guardians I'm, podcasts. well you know there's no one covering the sport according to people no. in the media this is no, very there's kind not a lot of, of quality options very, there there are no qual- kind there are no quality options thank you to our um our sister show the options <laughs> cease to it. exist it was how, how long can we get rid of this for people who are like stop using that joke i think it's already oh, oh i mean i i already kind of stopped um yeah. yeah, for those who don't know, we, we are mm-hmm. excited for more Zach Meisel uh, content. Anywhere is a good thing for fans, but uh, Adam LeBlanc absolutely phrase that a little nicer um, when we are sister network shows. That's that's our view, yeah. and we're just going to leave it there. Thank you for all being supporters of the show. It means yeah, thank you to people like John and um, David and... Like I said, I, I get Bruce, and, and I did want to shout out Aaron. Aaron and I were both like, it's been a rough week for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're sorry. It's been a week. Trust it's me. been and a I'm week. A, I am oh partaking goodness. in adult beverage as we are as we are doing this. So 
It's been a week. Uh, I'm going to go find some speaking of, It's been one of those. I'm of, kidding. I'm, I don't do God. anything. I don't, oh, I don't even Guardians drink. I don't even That's drink. I'm joking. Um, I don't even drink. So I mean, A right shoulder capsule rotator cuff surgery from Daniel Spina won't make you drink. Uh, he will be out all 2024 if you haven't heard yet. Last year, he had a surgery to repair his right anterior capsule. He has not pitched since April 2022. It was a Degrom. What is Daniel Espino's future? It was. It was. He was the best pitching prospect in baseball. It was a Degrom ceiling. He had the best fastball and the best slider in minor league baseball. He was the star. This is where I'm contractually obligated. Some people got mad at me today for saying this, but the minute he was drafted, I said he'd get hurt at least once before I got to the big leagues. I hate being right in this case, but there's a lot of stress on a smaller. I mean, he is strong. Like he is a built dude. Uh, you know, and then, and then I was just ready to believe uh, that his crazy flexibility would allow him to overcome. And then uh, he just, he had to go and break my heart. It's, you know, I, I knew it was you, Espino. Or no, it's, I knew, you know, it's, it's just, the ceiling is I so high. It, it just, it's, it's painful in that regard. It's just, it, it could have been feel, so much fun. I feel bad for the kid in general, because this is going to be a second shoulder surgery and, I guess third, if it's both the capsule and the, the rotator cuff kind of reminds me of Michael Brantley situation where he had to have two surgeries and he missed uh, you know, a better part of a couple of years because of um, they didn't get it right. The first time with the surgery, they misdiagnosed it. I don't know if that was the case here, but continued shoulder pain is not good. So this is going to be, I mean, if you go back, he pitched 16 innings in April, 2022, he missed all of that season for the most part. 16 innings is nothing. Um, yeah. He has basically missed three years of action. I feel bad because I also know he lost his, um, I believe, his father over the winter too. So, or a family member very close to him uh, died, at least. I don't want to say his father. I'm not sure, but definitely a family member who was very close to him. So, uh, you know, just really bad timing. And I feel bad. He's a good kid who works very hard. Um, you know, all the things we've heard about him personally, as far as work ethic and his attitude are just fantastic. So you feel bad for a kid like that. And, Whenever he does come back, I mean, I hope it's a great comeback story, but I mean, I don't think you can have an expectation at this point. Like we were talking off air about, you know, does he come back as a reliever? Does he do this? It's like, you just need to see him pitch healthy for a year and determine what it's, what's going to happen from there. I would also point out very unlikely Cleveland's going to use a 60 man, uh, 60 day IL spot on him because that would start his clock in the majors. Yeah, why, why start the clock so, on he is not that it, they're not going to clear a roster spot that way. It just seems very unlikely. So they only really did that with uh, Carlos Vargas. And by the time they did that, it was very clear that he wasn't going to be like an elite type of player. They were just out of, they were like, they're Ben Lively. Of, they were out of options know. at that point. They're out of options. Uh, yeah. Ben, ben Lively's got, Ben Lively's got options. He's, he's got options. I'm telling mm-hmm. you. Yeah. He's, I'm gonna have um, him on the show and just tell him all the terrible things you've said. I'm no, gonna... you won't. You can't even get the. We can't even get the bullpen catcher. How are you gonna get uh, Ben Lively on the show? Maybe I don't know. I'll, he has I'll, options. I'll... He could be on the other Guardians <laughs> podcast on our network. Okay, but he can't I'll, be here. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll start making friends with someone in the organization so they don't dislike us. So there, much. there are no one to be friends with. Oh, that's, that's right. Happen. We're just second class citizens, um, <laughs> just like their prospects who won't be on TV. One of the only uh, spring breakout games. Uh, the Giants yeah. posted a fantastic hype video. Well, this team does not Cubs. want you to know who exists. So, yeah, the Cubs had a hype video for it. Super fun. I asked Chris Antonetti today during they had a uh, media availability for those members not in Goodyear, and I asked Antonetti for any clarification on why Justin Campbell was removed from the prospect uh, spring breakout roster. All he really said was that he had felt some elbow discomfort, and they were working through options with him, um, but he is not expected to pitch anywhere in the near future. So. There are, we, we've been told he's having Tommy John by one yeah. source. I'll just say that we never confirmed it with a second source. So I'm not out there reporting it. I'm just saying we heard from one source and normally like to have two sources on that, but uh, that is why um, that was the, all Anthony was willing to offer on the Campbell situation, but don't expect to see him pitch this year is, is what I would say. Yeah. Um, baseball think, to watch. That'll also be yeah. basically him starting th- three, missing years. three years because he had, I don't think we ever got, did we ever get told what surgery he had last year? Yeah, it was like a, a UCL, um, it was elbow related. It was like to relieve tension or something. So, so it wasn't it's Tommy both, John, I mean, it was it's like, like o- ulnar nerve, ulnar nerve. It's just yeah. between him and Espino, both two years in a row with surgeries. 
state. Yeah, and they were arguably outside of the guys who graduated the top two right-handed pitchers in the minor. They would have been the top two in the system coming into the yeah. season for sure. Um, baseball to watch this weekend. The Guardians did update their spring breakout game, but you can't watch the game. You can only follow online and listen. Uh, if you're on YouTube, I'll post the rosters. You can see it here. We got Alamon and all the fun stuff. Cooper Ingo, Juan Brito, uh, CJ Capus, Jason Churio, Chase DeLauder, Kyle Manzardo, Alex Mooney, Khalil Watson, bunch of fun dudes. Um, and then here's the lineup. I think they don't uh, want you to know who any of them are. So. No, Cooper Ingle, Manzardo, Fox, Brito, Devers, Chorio, Halpin, DeLauder, and Noel are starting. Doug Nikhazy is starting for the Guardians, at least. I only saw pitchers throw like one or two innings in this game, so I wouldn't expect them to go too long. But that's who's starting for the Guardians as of this moment. Baseball, you can watch this weekend, Jeff. A lot of good uh, college baseball. This Finally getting got... into conference play. That's important. Yes, for... for most of them. A lot of guys, like... Right now, if you look at conference rankings, Florida State, I believe, is either 17 or 18 and 0, and they're not ranked. And Georgia is either 16 and 1 and 17 and 1, and they're not mm-hmm. ranked because of how poor the competition is that they've played. So for a lot of those guys, not gonna help them this weekend. No, I know, but like for the Charlie Condens, the James Tids, the James Tibbs, the Cam Smiths, like those are three potential first round hitters who we're gonna start seeing face, face good competition. Good. So like, that's, yeah, that's important. Kentucky or Georgia plays Kentucky. Not a, not a real big matchup there. So. I mean, Kentucky is probably better than anyone they've played so far though. It is. And same goes for Florida state and uh, uh, Notre Dame, Notre Dame playing or Florida state played Notre Dame. Florida state did play Florida this past week on a Tuesday, Tuesday. but I mean, Tuesday, Tuesday games Tuesday. don't count. No, uh, but you do have wake forest, Virginia. So that's a big weekend for guys like, uh, Hartle, Burns, Massey, Kurtz, King, all those guys. Clemson, Duke. Duke's just been battering everybody. Mm-hmm. And Santucci needs a rebound start. Healy needs a rebound start. Um, yeah, Virginia. Ted Leone versus Texas. Oh, we, we might get Ted Leone stuff. versus uh, Brayden Montgomery this weekend. That should be a lot of fun. That should be good. Arguably Tennessee the... and Alabama. You could get uh, – who is the Alabama pitcher you like? There's Ben Hess. Uh, ben Hess. One. Uh, yeah, so Ben Hess versus yeah. uh, Dylan well, Luke Coleman was and, there. That was the other guy's talking. Oh, about. that's right. Luke Coleman was there. Yeah, he was the the famous uh, betting scandal. No, no, uh, no. He's the LSU guy, the pitcher. Well, I know, but he was the guy pitch. who got scratched from his start. That, oh, oh, uh, oh. Okay. Hole. Yeah. Uh, if you're interested in Travis Bazana, he's playing Utah. Not a big matchup. No. Um, OSU is playing West Virginia, but we haven't seen anything about JJ Weatherholt coming back, so I wouldn't really look much into that. Um, I'm noting UC San Diego and Ryan Farcucci is playing Cal State Fullerton. They're not ranked, but Cal State Fullerton always has a pretty good roster. Uh, shout out to the, you know, Tanner Bobby pitch there, right? So, yeah. right? Cal State yeah. Fullerton. So. Yeah, he's a Fullerton kid. They always have a good One of the few ones there. to get through healthy. Why did you have to say that, Jeff? We've already talked about enough. No, no. He's got nothing. He has Don't been bulletproof. Put that out into the universe. Uh, Whoever has the voodoo doll, put it down, please. Pick up somebody else's voodoo doll. I don't care. I, I can't do it. It's, I mean, yeah, it's here. It's, it's listen, it's still going to be fun. I can't wait for real baseball to happen. Sorry, spring training isn't real baseball. So I'm looking forward to re- real baseball, things that matter. Uh, um, starting that next, note, starting in two weeks, by the way, is when you can get, if you're a T Mobile subscriber, I say going to make sure to go. There's one week to sign up for it this year. It's limited. I'll let you know when T Mobile pops that. We have our position reviews at first, second, third. And of course, relief is going to be an interesting Might one. Might as well do the relief about. show today. I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll request that be our next position review. Yeah. So um, and, you know, we'll always be more expansion protection, but we, we got we to gotta go. Uh, thank you for joining us this week. We appreciate each one of our everydayers. I'm sure you were checking us out on Twitter for so- tons of fun content this weekend where we'll be discussing all of the big college games. And go, go, Guardians, go. This week ceases to occur. <laughs>